Let's look at performing a, a scan using Nmap, or more specifically, I'm going to use the, the graphical user uh, front end for Nmap, and this is called ZenMap. And what we're going to do here in, this, in, in the lab, uh, this is going to be part of the Metasploit lab, the, um, I've got a virtual machine running here. Uh, in in a VMware virtual network and I'll show you um, what I did here is I just ran a IP config slash all let me show you what that command is IP config space slash all and if you don't know what IP config does for you you should really do some research on this because I use it all the time um, so what we're going to do here, well, what IP config does for you, it shows you all your internet protocol uh, interfaces. For example, this is the, uh, the local local area connection that I'm actually I'm actually connected to this right now from another computer. But when I installed VMware, it installed a couple of virtual networks. So one of them is what uh, they refer to as VMNet one. And notice it uh, right now it's using an auto config IP4 address. That's kind of interesting. I need to check into that. Um, the other one is VM Network or VM Net 8. Now, in this case, that's the one I'm interested in because I know that's where I installed this virtual machine. Now, the virtual machine happens to be a, a Windows Server 2003 standard edition. Uh, so that's what we're going to use for the Metasploit assignment. But notice here the IP version 4 address that's used by VMNet 8 is, well, this particular address here is the host machine itself. So um, it is 192.168.187.1. That tells me that the whole VMNet 8 it uses 192.168.187. something. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to scan this whole uh, address, this whole class C address, um, and see which hosts are uh, available there. Which what you know what's what's online. Now, in the real world, you would have to find this address some other way um, and we we looked at footprinting for example that would be a possible way to discover the IP range that's being used by a particular company um, so this is a little bit of abbreviated process we're going to use here so this is the network that I'm going to scan using in map so Here's what we're going to do. Uh, ZenMap is just a graphical user interface front end for Nmap. Uh, personally, I don't use Nmap enough to remember the syntax of the various scans that you can do. So I like the, the graphical user interface. So up here in the target box, I'm going to type 192.168.187. dot one then I'm going to do a dash 254 uh, that's going to scan the whole network this whole class C address network now before I click on scan I'm also going to start a Wireshark uh, capture here and I made some modifications to my Wireshark here and briefly I'll show you how you do it um, it takes a little practice to um, get it to do what you want but if you go to view and preferences and then under the user interface go to columns you play around with this and it's, it takes a, a minute or two to figure out how it really works you can add columns and the columns I added were source port and destination port uh, because I, I find these very informative uh, 
So I made that change so yours doesn't look like mine necessarily. So I'm going to click here. Oh, by the way, let's just go all the way to the back uh, at the beginning. Uh, interfaces here. Notice I'm going to capture here on VMNet 8. Now this is internal. Okay, remember that's where the virtual machine is that we're eventually going to attack. So that's what I want to scan on. Uh, if you scan the wrong thing here, you're going to get either no packets or packets that aren't going to tell you what you need to know or what you're looking for. So I'm going to go on and click on start here and it gives me this little prompt because I've had a capture already there. I come back over here and click on scan. So start your capture first and then go to scan. And while it's getting its uh, everything prepared here, uh, let me remind you again you don't have to run Wireshark to uh, do a port scan. And this is what we're doing. We're doing a port scan. You don't have to run Wireshark to compromise a computer. I merely have you do uh, Wireshark under these circumstances so you can see what's going on. So Wireshark is just for you. So the scan is proceeding, um, and really even at this point we've got a pretty good idea of what's going on here. Um, so I think I may be okay just going and stopping my scan and talking about it, excuse me, stopping my capture and, and talking about it. Yeah, I think I will. So I'm going to stop my, my capture. Again, Wireshark, you don't have to do this. But I want to show you what's going on. And this is, uh, recall the exercise we did with SuperScan 3. It's the same concept. Uh, MAP starts off with doing an ARP sweep here, um, looking for which computers, uh, well, the thing about it, the, the purpose of ARP is to obtain the, the MAC address that corresponds to an IP address. Um, you're only going to see these ARP packets if the scanning computer is on the same network that's being scanned. If the scanning computer is on a different network, uh, these will still exist, but they're going to be uh, generated by the router. Uh, that's the gateway uh, to the remote network and you're not going to be able to see them if you happen to be scanning or excuse me capturing up uh, doing a packet capture here so these are a peculiarity of the fact that I'm sitting on the same network that I'm scanning so let's go on through these and see what's next in our procedure here By the way, um, I will point out, um, I do a lot of packet captures different places because I, I think it's interesting and I, I learn things. Um, I've seen these ARP, uh, just a, a big long series of ARP packets. I've seen these quite often uh, on our network here at the college. And that tells me that from outside, somebody is going through all these addresses. So if you were on the outside, you wouldn't see all these, but if you happen to be sitting inside and doing a capture, you're going to see all these ARP requests. Um, and that just tells me that somebody's scanning this network. In this case, it happens to be me. So let's get on through the ARP packets. And every once in a while, notice you get a response. Um, interesting. Um, notice right now the source and destination are uh, this is um, a MAC address associated with a. Um, this is actually 192.168.187.1, which is the the interface on the host machine that is connected to VMNet 8. 
So for my purposes, this is the computer. I'm actually this is the host operating system. Now remember, when you do ARPs, you don't know what IP addresses are. So that's why we're using MAC addresses and broadcasts here because we don't have IP numbers yet. So we finally get down here and I didn't see it at the time but there should be one response here. Um, I know this because there happens to be one computer running internally on this network and that's the one we're going to scan. Um, and here's where it figured this out. Actually, it should have figured it out up here somewhere. We should go back and look at this about. So it's the 128. Yeah. See, this is the only response we got to an ARP request. And this is the source uh, of the uh, ZenMap scan. And this is the response well, this is the source, and this is the actual one that responded. Uh, this is the actual response. This tells NMAP that there is a computer at uh, 192.168.107, or excuse me, 187.128. Uh, and as I pointed out, I know this is the only computer internally uh, on this on this private network. But this is how NMAP knows that that computer is alive because it responded to an ARP. So now we can go from here, and you'll notice the rest of these packets, uh, for the most part, are going to go. And I, I'm not sure. A lot of these are actually going also to 187.254, and I'd have to think about what that is. I got a feeling that's got something to do with uh, VMware itself. But what what I know we're interested in is the the, the packets going. To 192, 168, 187, 128. So in this case, from 192, 168, 187, 1 to 192, 168, 187, 128, going to port destination port here 445, um, NMAP sent out a, uh, we need to go back up here. And find the first instance of this. Here you go. Uh, here's the send packet. Now, in this case on 192, 168, 187, 128, there really is something listening there. So you'll notice here um, we're going to get us, we send out a send packet uh, to this internal computer. Here is the response. Notice from here to here, this is the source port on the computer that's running ZenMap, and that's the destination. And here's the reply, and those numbers just switch. And this is the SENAC packet. Now, this is the packet that told uh, ZenMap that something is listening on TCP port 445 on this computer. So ZenMap will make a note of that. Now, in this case, what ZenMap is going to do is going to just, just reset the connection and move on. So you'll notice down here that uh, here's a packet. Let's see. It's easier if these are in order, but they're not necessarily going to be in order. Here's one right here. This is the send packet uh, from the computer running ZenMap to uh, that's not the one I want. I want that one um, to the internal computer that we know is running 192, 160, 187, 128. The destination port this time is 139. Now this is a this is a Microsoft networking port, um, and trust me, you don't want this visible on the internet. Um, so we need to block this at our border router. We'll talk about that later. So there's the send packet from ZenMap, and if you look right down here, that's the response, the SendAct packet. This is coming from the internal computer. Source port 139, notice how that just switched. 
back to the computer running ZenMap, uh, there's a SynAC packet. Now again, that told ZenMap that there's something listening on TCP port 139. So that's how that works. Now again, Wireshark, I just want you to see how this is, you know, what goes on here. And I'm sure as soon as I stop this video, I'll remember what 254 is. We could have sorted these uh, some, or better still, we could have filtered it uh, and just saw the the 128 machine. But anyway, you don't have to use Wireshark. I just want you to see what's going on. And it's a classic port scan. ZenMap sends out send packets to all the ports and when it gets a send ACK packet back, ZenMap knows something is listening on that port, that TCP port. So I think ZenMap is finished here. If we back up here uh, here's kind of the main summary that we're interested in. Um, TCP port 135 is open. That means it responded. 139 is open. That means it responded, and we just saw that. 445 is open. We saw that. Uh, 1025 and 1026. These are a little skeptical. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, if there's a, a pattern to those particular numbers right there. Um, for our purposes, you know, if we, if we were an attacker and we saw this, uh, particularly, uh, you know, 15 years ago, we would have known we were in business, probably. Um, these are all used in Microsoft networks. Um, so if you're running, if you have a Microsoft network, you're going to probably need these. But what you want to do is block these going and coming on your border router so but anyway uh, in this case this is very informative because now we know what we're going to attack uh, this is the RPC service or the DCOM service you remember I had you look up a particular vulnerability well the vulnerability I had you look up actually uses uh, these ports so that's all very informative um, so I wanted you to see what's going on here ZenMap is a port scanner, um, and you recall here or notice that we ran an intense scan, and that generated a lot of packets very quickly. It took just uh, we can look here and see how many seconds this thing ran. It was less than a minute. It generated a lot of traffic, very noisy. That's what we would refer to, um, and it's. Um, basically looking for open ports. So we looked at an open port, uh, we saw two or three there, back in uh, VMware. Let me just show you what a closed port looks like. Uh, this one should work. So here we have a packet that's going from ZenMap to the internal computer on TCP 1434. That's a send packet. And if we look back, 1434, if we look now through here, eventually we're going to find that. Yeah, took a little while. Um, but notice this is coming back from the internal computer. To the ZenMap computer saying reset acknowledgement. That tells ZenMap there's nobody, there's no service or application listening on 1434. So port scan run by ZenMap. Okay, this is intense, very noisy, generates a lot of packets in a very short time, um, and it's looking for open ports. And once we find open ports, then we can use that knowledge to uh, try to discover it, uh, a vulnerability that we can exploit. And that's where um, Mesploit comes in.
one final reminder, you don't need to run Wireshark to do a port scan. I just wanted you to see what's going on in the background.